you know, natural. You know, in my time, you know, my days are natural, so, you know, I'm trying to live up to that, you know. I get possessed by, by the spirits. And so Y'all pay attention to this video, man. Please subscribe to um, Jay Marvelous, please, man. Shout out to Jay Marvelous, man. He did all this work right here, not me. So, watch this video. Your involvement in the Golden Dawn? Oh, my involvement in the Golden Dawn is in so much as <clears throat> I was pretty... I was very interested, actually, in, in Eastern and Western mysticism. And I spent time reading and researching when I was younger. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. That, 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 that's it. There, were some, there were some very eminent characters in the Golden Dawn, and uh, I found it very interesting to see the history of those that had been in it and this sort of esoteric movement, and also sort of what went on, uh, the offshoots of it, uh, of that sort of love of all things mystical and magical, all things bright and beautiful, really. Um, do you think that's why people did that thing when they played Snowy Tavern backwards and said that you were talking about Satan? Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm going to get, I'm going to go straight back to the Beatles here because there, there was there was a time when somebody wrote a thesis about Paul McCartney being dead, and Paul is dead. And if you played back the records, I'm very serious. It's, it's crazy, but if you played back the records, there was something which said Paul is dead, and so then they started to play back all manner of records, and of course we were going to be main candidates for it, and. Um, and somebody, somebody said, oh, it says My Sweet Satan in it. And I thought, oh, gosh, it's hard enough writing the music one way around. <laughs> My book um, is that, you know, uh, and I wanted to thank you because you let me come on your show and sing. And that was, yeah. you know, a lot of my book is about my uh, wanting to sing ever since I was a little girl and my family lied to me and told me that I was better than Shirley Temple and I believe uh, that. that. You're not helping a kid when you do that. No, and no. I totally believe them and everything. And then when I was six, all of a sudden, you know, I was a has-been and they started to like <laughs> tell my younger cousin that she was, uh, she you was know. She was a real singer? Yeah, and it like really upset me so I like summoned Satan and I I, I write about how I, I made it. I Where do you summon no, the it's, it's in the chapter called Eat, Pray, Love, Conjure Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was 12 years old, I signed a, a deal with Satan in my room, and I, I was there. CBS doesn't condone no, this. In wait anyway. a minute. <laughs> Because I wanted to get famous no matter what, and, you know, then I forgot that I had this deal with Satan and everything, and then I got really famous, and then one day I, like, had this tragic singing accident. At oh, the, yes, I remember that, uh, yeah. And I realized then that Satan was coming for my soul, so, yeah, he, was, he wanted me to pay up, so... The book is about that and how at the end I invite uh, Satan to dinner at Spago. And you, you should, he's there most nights, but you should... Uh, no, but wait, and well, I, I ask him to, you know, re give me a refi, a refinance on my soul thing. And uh, so that works out. It has a happy ending. Oh, all right. So you, you and Satan are good then? Yeah, Satan, I, I have to say it's really cool because I totally... Satan is not true, you can't say that on CBS! I didn't, I didn't say that. I said I kind of, I lure him in, see. Peace, y'all, peace, peace. I want to talk about a few things today. Um, I want to talk about, I want to discuss the topic of um, entertainers that break the oath. Okay, um... This happens a lot in entertainment, you know, um, a lot of times it happens in front of us and we don't, we don't even realize what's going on, okay? So first I'm going to, I'm going to define what, uh, what the word oath, uh, means, okay? Okay, so oath is, uh, a solemn, uh, 
are usually formal calling upon God or a God to witness to the truth of what one says or to witness that one sincerely intends to do what one says. Okay? So, basically, you're agreeing to follow suit. Okay? You're agreeing that what you say is honest. All right? And there are penalties for breaking an oath. Okay? Um, there, there, there are a lot of penalties for breaking an oath. Okay? Um, this happens a lot to a lot of entertainers, even the ones on the lower levels. You know, um, people that decide to break the oath, you know, usually are, usually are uh, struck with penalties, okay? Um, years ago, you had, um, you had Little Kim that stood on the stand and lied to the judge. Now, some may say that that was a real thing to do, but when you work for these organizations... That's a big no-no, okay? So when you notice these artists um, doing the, the lip over the mouth in a, in a shh manner, you know, like, shh, don't say nothing, you know? That, that's, that's, that's to show you that, you know, they've taken the oath, all right? To, to, to keep secrecy, all right? That they, that they won't say nothing. They won't, tell, they won't tell what goes on behind closed doors. It's to keep you blind, all right? Um... A lot of people don't understand this that you know you you gotta you gotta get down with somebody to get to get in there you know and people ask me this all the time yo jay do you have to do do you have to get down with an organization no you don't you don't have to so when these people realize um what goes on you know and they they they're they're a part of it at first all right they're a part of it at first okay and you know, after a while, they get tired. They get tired of of misleading people. They get tired of waking up every day and and not and feeling that void of unhappiness. Okay, because you know, when you do these things, you know, um, there's an emptiness that you deal with. Okay, um, when they start to see you rebelling and not following suit. Like you said you would in this oath, you agreed to these terms, okay, um, there are penalties behind this, okay? So you start to see a lot of these entertainers being locked up or scandals come out, all right? Uh, when they decide to follow suit, the allegations are all of a sudden gone, all right? Let's think about it. When the, the first time R. Kelly was accused of, um, you know? I'm going to talk about um, something else also. Blackballing in the industry. Um, blackballing um, happens in uh, everyday life, even employment, regular employment. Blackballing is um, something that, that uh, should be illegal. It should be illegal. Um, but it's not, okay? Um so basically, blackballing is when somebody in a higher position prevents someone else in a lower position from progressing. Um, stopping this person financially. Um, but yeah, blackballing is something that's uh, um, uh, a, a tactic used. Uh, I, I, I would say that this is probably something that was started with uh, the Willie Lynch era. You know what I'm saying? A crab in the barrel mentality. Uh, keeping one individual down so that they don't progress above you or whatever. Um, yeah, this happens a lot, man. But what I don't understand is why um, a lot of gatekeepers um, in the industry uh, they don't they don't allow certain people to come in. You know that that's um, that to me I don't understand. I never understood that. Um, if you are in a position um, to financially help someone, what is the point of preventing them from succeeding uh, financially? You know, what happens is the person may go to 
a record label and be getting and, and, and may get a deal. A record deal may come along, okay? Um now this person that's in the office about to get the deal, uh someone else that that person may be having an issue with can call that label and say, Hey, don't do the business with them. Okay? And the deal is done. Now how about this? How about this? Why you got me talking? How about I can stop a record at Koch? I believe you could. Um, you could know somebody that may have close connections to a person. Um, this person, you know, may tell you, yeah, 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 I'm going I'm to pass the music to such and such, okay? And, uh, you know, and then now you in hopes of getting, you rubbing shoulders with this person in hopes of getting an opportunity. But the opportunity never comes. Okay? And you ask yourself, why? Is it something I'm doing wrong? No, it's the person that you're... Another person that's in a higher position. Um, you're just preventing your own situation. Because the middleman is not going to want you to become higher than him. So if you, so let's just say uh, you rap, okay? And um, you're... you're, you're, you're your homeboy down the street knows um, Meek Mill, okay? All right? And um, you want you want your you want your your homeboy to get your CD to Meek Mill or your music to Meek Mill, right? You know because like they say, every third, every sixth person knows somebody that knows somebody, okay? So somebody knows somebody, okay? So you get next to this guy, you're like, yo, man, I need you to pass my music to Meek, okay? Um, he tells you to your face, I. Right, you know, I'm a, I'll see if it's good. I let him see what I can do, right? But all the while, you never get nowhere. You don't get anywhere. You you dealing doing music, yo? Did he listen to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it's dope, man. He said it's dope. Okay, okay. Um, nine times out of ten, um, your music never made it to this person. Okay. Um, either this individual that you're going through is possibly hating on you, uh, or or there could be a situation um, whereas uh, you're just not that good, you know, but he's afraid to tell you. So here's the thing, right? Um, that middleman will not want you to progress above him, okay? Um, these are things that happen um, all the time.